All right, let's get started. Welcome to our first session of Lightning Talks. And our first speaker, like, and the rules of engagement, five, five minutes for the talk, a question or two maybe, and then the next speaker. So I'm going to push on the time. We, we are pretty packed. So our first speaker is Philip from Peloton, and he will talk about Python with Basil. Thank you. Just to clarify, uh, this is not the biking company, but uh, I get I get the very first thing that people ask me is like, oh, what do you do for the biking company? My answer is not the biking company. Uh, so uh, we do uh, platooning trucks. So uh, we use Basil in a very uh, automotive fashion. So very similar to a lot of the talks you've already heard. Uh, here we go. Forward and backwards buttons. We're uh, spoiled here. So. Um, this talk is a little bit historical, so not so much on what you can do with Bazel today. Perhaps there are probably better ways of doing things with Bazel, especially with uh, rules Python. Uh, they've come a long way. Uh, a lot of what I'll talk about today is largely because uh, when I tried to use rules Python two or three years ago, uh, I had a lot of trouble making stuff work with Python 3. Uh, making stuff work with uh, wheels, importing custom wheels, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it, it, it's largely custom in, in a lot of ways, but uh, part of my motivation here is to maybe generate some, spark some discussions with uh, you guys and see uh, what other people have done. That's, that's actually what I'm really curious about. Uh, so I'm sure everyone's seen uh, various problems they've encountered when working with uh, Python and Google, uh, trying to import some module. Oh, can't import it. Well, you finally dig down and you realize that the user in question has installed something with pip on their host machine and has claimed the Google uh, folder as like the Google folder to import stuff from. Uh, Something similar, can't import blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, the user's using a different version of Python than what you compiled your SO for, uh, stuff like that. And so, and just a couple other stories that just uh, got annoying to the point that really triggered us to look into this whole sandboxing thing. Uh, the last one was, I think, the final straw is when people had different version of pandas and getting didn't have all the APIs on all the machines, and so people couldn't run each other's Python scripts and stuff like that. So it was just getting too much. Uh, so I won't, don't really have time to go into details of like how it's all set up. Um, at the core of it, based on the first slide, uh, we just have a shell script that Python top points to, and that then delegates to a uh, data dependency that is uh, the entirety of uh, Python runtime. And so what this lets us do, do I have a pointer here? Is that is that a pointer thingy? Okay, uh, not very strong. Um, so what that lets us do is essentially have a Python test that without any dependencies, so you, you, don't, you don't see any depths here, uh, without any dependencies, it will fail all the import statements and the the important thing here is that this will work on any workstation, on all our Jenkins slaves, the RBE workers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, just and so one nice benefit of this is that um, you have one version of Python on the host, or maybe no version of Python on the host, and whatever uh, version of Python you have inside the sandbox. So you can Bazel run your uh, Python environment and you have access to whatever is sandboxed. I apologize for putting stuff so low on the screen. The people in the back might not be able to just see everything. Uh, didn't really think about that, sorry. And uh, oh, I guess I duplicated that slide. Uh, so what, what does it really get us? Well, ultimately, uh, we have the same bugs for everyone, that's, I guess, really, uh, like if somebody has a problem, 
all the other people will have the same problem. Or if they have something working, it'll work for everyone else. Uh, to, sum, to sum it up, uh, Python is really, really good at dereferencing symlinks. Uh, it, it's, I've had a lot of trouble with it. Uh, one of the big things that I still struggle with is that the syspath has a entry to the source tree, like an absolute path to the source tree in there. Uh, I'm not sure how to get rid of it, but uh, anyway. Uh, NitPy files are hard to work with, uh, be best to get rid of them. Uh, there's also, I think the newer version of s versions of Bazel actually flip the default, so you don't have to do this anymore. Uh, Love Python 3 fixed a lot of the initpy uh, problems. Uh, dash s prevents your own user site, uh, I forgot what they call it. Um, yeah, site directory, I thought there was a different name for it. Uh, Love Wheels, pre-compiled stuff is pretty nice, unless you're then trying to run Python on ARM or something like that, but uh, that's a separate story. And my biggest uh, takeaway is always got to stay up to date with Basil. Thank you. Uh, it's a good question. So the, yeah, so the question was uh, essentially, um, Bazel has a lot of holes in the sandboxing schemes. Uh, one of the more obvious ones, at, at least as, as it pertains to this talk, is that by default it uh, references, or it used to at least, uh, use the host's uh, Python runtime. Uh, so the question was, is there is there a way to uh, perhaps inform users better to, uh, to not catch them off guard like this. Uh, or did I did I get that right? Yeah. Um, there, I, I think we can definitely do better, and, and one of the big ones that still catches me uh, a, a lot is the fact that things like bash are not part of the sandbox either. Uh, always escape back out to the host. Uh, I don't know, I, I, it's, pr it's probably a bit tough just because there's a lot to Bazel already to teach people without getting into the whole, well, oh, here's this lovely hermetic thing. But here, the here, well, I guess you always have to elaborate on the nitty gritty details at some point. So I don't know if there, what documentation there is, but probably be a really good idea to have a page for it, for exactly that. Like here's how Bazel does not sandbox things. Is that, is that along the lines of what you were asking? Okay. Cool, well, two minutes, thank you. Thanks, Philip. <laughs> right.